Music producers, without a doubt, I can guarantee you this will be the most in-depth video you have ever watched about growing a type B channel. And also, we're doing a giveaway that ends in about two days. So if you haven't entered, first link in the description below, the prizes are crazy. Now, not only will we be sharing our gems, but we will also be talking with four other producers today in this video. One of them has been struggling to grow a tight beat channel since 2018. We're talking to another producer who has gained almost 10,000 subscribers on his tight beat channel. We will talk to Dilly, who has over 100K subs and has almost made a million dollars from his tight beats and still one more talking to matthew may who has made almost two hundred thousand dollars from his type b channel in the past two years and grew his channel to over 100k now the dilly and matthew may calls were also about 30 minutes each so to keep them from being too long i did have to chop them up but the full interviews will be available for our ccs students in the course oh by the way if all of that is not enough we are even discussing the new suggested method that is freaking blowing up producers channels in the past few weeks literally our discord has been filled with people sending screenshots of the suggested algorithm going crazy with their beats so I gotta be honest with you boys I have no clue how long this video will be we have a lot to talk about so all I know is that you want to get a snack and a notebook and let's get started we got that <laughs> Okay, so before we get into anything regarding the technicalities and any convos with our special guests, we need to make sure that we are keeping it real with each other here when it comes to YouTube. Believe it or not, YouTube is not sunshine and rainbows. When you first start, I guarantee you it is going to be the roughest patch of your journey. Matthew May even had this to say during our interview with him. You're not gonna have success in the beginning. You're just not, it's not gonna, you know, start right away it takes it takes some time so with that being said i first want to talk to a producer who has been struggling since 2018 to grow a tight beat channel yo yo what's up man can you hear me yeah i can hear you so i just have like a, a handful of questions about everything with your tight beat channel more so about almost like the mental questions about having a type b channel and kind of what you're going through right now how long have you had your channel so far well i've actually done this a couple of times i made my first one like just my original one uh back when i first started making beats which i guess was kind of a problem because the first beats i was uploading were literally the first beats i ever made <laughs> i did that for a good couple of years i was back in 2018 i was i was kind of consistent with it but i was i was never a niche down i wasn't using like um i wasn't doing like research on keywords so i was just kind of uploading whatever beat i thought it was and a lot of the times the beats didn't sound too good anyway that led me to like a couple hundred subscribers over a couple of years but then i kind of like fell off kind of just stopped uh, doing it as much because i wasn't seeing uh any crazy returns wow there's so much to unpack here because i didn't i didn't know that at all yeah <laughs> what you struggled with when you first started obviously the beats weren't as quality as they should be factor number one but you also said yeah. you didn't niche down you didn't do any keyword research you were just kind of posting whatever so how has that changed your approach now to the channel you just recently made now i'm i'm doing basically opposite of everything i did before <laughs> niching down i'm using um that i or not that iq tube buddy to uh research my keywords doing everything i didn't do before pretty much <laughs> so how far along are you on this new channel now Maybe like 30 days, if that. Okay. If you could pull up your analytics right now, it'd be awesome. But also if you could just ballpark, like how many views have you gotten in the past 30 days? Uh, it, yeah, it's under a thousand. I believe it's like seven or 800. Yeah, I've had a couple of videos do better than I thought. What's your consistency like? I've been doing one a day for maybe not for not not for every day I've done so far. I had like a couple of hiccups in the beginning, but mm -hmm. I'd say maybe for like the last two weeks, I've been every day. And I'm going to try to keep that going. That's what I want to do. I know I can do every day. So going back now to 2018 and having that channel building up to like a few hundred subscribers and kind of just growing a type B channel. How do you deal with like, is it demotivating? Right. Cause I know a lot of producers feel that like after so yeah. long, like it can be so demotivating. No, it definitely. It definitely is. What's your outlook of what's getting you through? this process of like, this kind of sucks right now, but I know in the future, like what, what's your goal? What do you want the outcome to be? The two things that are really getting me through is one is seeing uh, everyone else having success. 
uh, just makes me know that if I just uh, put the time in, there's no reason that I can't have success either. Uh, and then secondly, I would say um, there's almost like no point in not doing it. I feel like I don't want my beats to just be sitting around. I feel like if I have the ability to put them on YouTube, I feel like I might as well do it. Simple, but deep. I love that. Next question I have is so like, okay, so this is really good. There's there's a really good like contrast here. So back in 2018, you were posting just whatever you felt like making. Whatever I could make. Yeah. <laughs> And now you're niche down. Big struggle a lot of producers have is kind of just doing one sound over and over again. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's essential for YouTube growth and it sounds like you're on the same page. How do you deal not only with the results being slow, but having to kind of play within the YouTube game and lose a little bit of the creativity on your end? Yeah, the YouTube game's definitely tough. I think one thing, you definitely have to pick a sound you actually enjoy the music of. You have to like what you're making because it's you're going to be making a lot of it. So I didn't even ask, what keyword niche are you doing right now for this new channel? Uh, lately, the one that's been giving me the most success is Duke Deuce type beats. First couple beats, I was uh, doing Key Glock, and then um, I threw uh, Duke Deuce on there. So I did a Key Glock and Duke Deuce type beat, and that did better. And so now you're only just targeting Duke Deuce type beats? I've been a little on and off with it, um, just trying to, since I'm in the early stages, I'm seeing trying to see what artists work, what don't. Mm -hmm. uh, just trying to get the best results. And so just to kind of categorize like what you would say is the best results is just looking at like, okay, I know I usually get 30 average views. So if, if it does better, like that's essentially how you're categorizing. Yeah, pretty just much based on the views. I mean, is there any advice you would give to somebody? I would say definitely, like I said it before, but you, I think it's really important to pick a sound you enjoy making. Burnout is going to happen. Even, even when you pick a sound you like. Mm -hmm. Another thing is uh, if you could find producers who make loops in the style of your niche, uh, try to reach out to them just because that can make things a little easier. Like if you have a busy couple of days and you know I can't make beats for like two or three days in a row, you gotta make like, you might have to make like three or four beats in a day to uh, make sure, if you want a daily upload, yeah. to uh, make sure you have a beat for every day. So, some, so for those days, it helps to have loops and you could kind of just pump a couple of beats out and be set. Yeah, man, that's that's a crazy. That's, that's like I think that's the most slept on gem. It's just collaborating with people because there's definitely a lot of loop makers out there nowadays who oh, are yeah. happy to work with you and figure stuff mm -hmm. out. Awesome, man. Well, that's all I have. If you have anything you want to plug, what's your what's your socials? Prod G Smooth on uh, Instagram and OG Smooth on Twitter. Thank you so much for doing this. Hopefully, people can find some inspiration in what you had to say. We're gonna get on with the rest of the video, man. Peace out. All right. See ya. Okay, so huge shout out to G Smooth for getting on that call and sharing a little bit about his journey. Growing a type B channel is 100% an uphill battle, but like G Smooth said, what else is there to do with my beats other than just let them sit on the hard drive? Now, like I said earlier in this video, man, we have a lot of technicalities to cover up. You guys saw the screenshots of how crazy this new suggested method is going. But before we talk about that, we need to hop in a call with Dilly because there's some great advice that he needs to share with every music producer. Oh, yo, what's up, man? Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Whenever me and you have a conversation, and like I was telling you about the suggested method, you always come back to quality. And the conversation we just had before doing this, we got onto quality. So why is quality so important to you? And why is it like, why is that next level of quality so important for type beats on YouTube? I think we should probably like take a step back and define what quality is. Yeah. Because that doesn't mean that you have the cleanest mix. That doesn't mean that you have the best arrangement. I feel like, well, that's maybe arrangement is more so part of it, but I think quality is how does that person on the other side of the computer feel when they listen to your stuff? Just the more intense that feeling is, the better. And the more they relate to it, the better. Okay, so I guess explain what your stress test is. My stress test is basically, I mean, you, I stress test at like different layers and that like, this is when I'm at my best. Like there's been periods where I've been a bit lazy and I didn't even know I was lazy, but when I, I'll just explain why I'm at my best. So the stress test is one, if you're using loops or samples, you're going to stress test like those ideas. The more ideas that you take in, the better. And you need to have the self-discipline to hold off on the ideas. And you want to like, you want to come at a skeptical point of view is like, is this really the best idea? I could literally pick any idea on the internet. And is this the one I want to go with? And um, you got to be careful because you can get like too caught up in that and be a perfectionist. That's like test number one is like what idea sticks out over and over. Once you have the idea, you, 
you know, take it and hopefully you have some friends that like rap music or like artist friends or producers and you want to send it to, I'm not kidding. If I have an idea, I'll send it to like 20, 30 people. Yeah, you send me and just, sometimes. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll send it to anyone I know that like, I either respect their taste in music or they're also a producer or, and then you, you just read the feedback. Like, do you get like enthusiastic responses or do you get like, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Cause like, if you get like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Then it's like a six out of 10, like, like a seven out of 10. And if you get like 18 fire emojis from like 12 different people, you just increase the odds of putting out something that performs well. So if you can put it out and then you're able to do that consistently, then people get excited when they see your name pop up and your thumbnail style pop up. And then that's gonna like, that's gonna take care of those stats like click through rate and stuff like that. Yeah, there's hacks that you can kind of do to level that up. And like, I'm not saying that you shouldn't take advantage of those, you should. You have to keep finding new hacks if you want longevity and you can do that. Um, but I think you're more likely to have high performance for, for an extended period of time if people are just truly excited to click on your stuff. And if you don't innovate and you don't continue to try to make stuff that like makes people excited eventually, cause you can't listen. I mean, think about how you listen to music. You can't listen to the same album 30 times in a row and feel the same way about it, yeah. you know, is when, so like you have to innovate and you have to come up with new stuff. Otherwise, like if people get bored, they're going to click, click on your stuff less like <laughs> that just, and so I mean, all those factors go into whatever quality would be. Yeah, man. So the one thing I want to pick out with that is it's what you texted me as the abstract X factor. And I, I love the terms and I'm going to run with it in the <laughs> video. I think you mentioned kind of your click through rate was going down and you kind of felt like, okay, like I'm not really putting, I'm not stress testing my beats enough. Mm -hmm. And so that's correct, right? Your click through rate was going down and you felt like it really wasn't anything much to do with the design. It was actually the beats themselves. Yeah. And so where you kind of got with this is kind of people were finding you or, or viewing you and being like, eh, you know, like it is getting stale or this isn't enough to get me to come back again. So mm -hmm. can you break down what the abstract X factor means to you or, or should mean to other producers what that terminology is? It's like what you can do for people with your beats. Like, do you get them excited? Do you inspire them? It's like that you, you like YouTube doesn't have an analytic to let you know how inspired <laughs> people are yeah. on one, to, on a rating of one to 10 after listening to your music, you know? So I would feel like that is it. And then like, it could be things kind of like your general, like aesthetic on your page and that kind of stuff. It's your track record too. It is like, if you put out 12 beats in a row that are just like amazing 10 out of 10 beats, they're going to listen to the 13th one. But if you put 13, 14, six out of 10 beats in a row, like it's you're not, like you're, trust, I feel like. Exactly. It's trust with your audience. Going back, you said trying to innovate and, and not doing the same style over and over again. I guess, can mm -hmm. you clear up what that means? Because I don't want people to think that that means do a Drake type beat and then next three months, we're over here doing pop smoke beats, then the same channel mm -hmm. we're doing. I'm a pop producer now. I mean, you've been doing J. Cole Kanye beats. What advice would you give then <laughs> of maintaining? Well, I guess first off, how important is it to maintain that consistency of a style? Okay, so yeah, that's a good point. I didn't clarify that. So I do think that's not a good idea to go from Pop Smoke to Drake to yeah. Lil Uzi Burr or something, who knows. You definitely wanna stay in the same world and kind of the same feeling to some extent where like my channel, it doesn't have to be uplifting soul because like if you listen to my most high beat, it's a little like maybe darker, but it's high energy, but a little darker, but the music is very, it's very authentic. Mm -hmm. Like it, whether or not it's a real string set, re real string section, but I'm not using like VSTs with like perfectly like same velocity on every note, like a little baby type beat or something like that, you know, like it has a real feel to it. It's not like I'm doing like Kanye and then like a Playboy Cardi type beat or something, you know? Think about the people that like certain types of music. Usually they kind of, like the, the subscriber base that you build up is gonna, if someone likes J. Cole, they probably like Drake. If they yeah. like Drake, they probably like Kanye. You know, it like kind of works in that in that world. Great example, but, actually. 
Hundred percent. Yeah, now I think about it. That's actually a really good example. It's a really good way to look at it. I mean, even those artists are uh, versatile. Like those artists are versatile. So like, I mean, if we even look at an album like 2014 Forest Hill Drives, uh, J. Cole has a song like w Love Yours, but he also has Tale of Two Cities, yeah. which is like a dark, but there's that like, there's a consistency of that, of that feel, you know, Th those both sound authentic. It's not like Tale of Two Cities does not feel like a generic trap beat to me. For somebody who's at a point where they're struggling right now, would it be better to maybe look into new keywords or just kind of go with the intuition of putting their foot down and just going deeper with what they're doing? Kind of a tough question. Yeah, I mean, I, it's a case by case basis. Yeah. I would have to listen to their stuff. If your stuff is just like pretty mid and average, and a lot of times as the person making it, you have no idea if your stuff is good or not. Like if your beats are good, then you need to switch up the keywords. But like if your beats aren't good, no keyword is gonna work. True. Like <laughs> it just <laughs> like if, and by good, it's like, are people excited when they hear your beats? Like, do they inspire? Like, you should be making some sales, even if like, if you're getting a hundred views and you're posting, I mean, 30, uh, 30 times a month or something like that, that's 3000 views a month, like just on brand new videos, not counting your old ones. Hmm. Uh, you should be making a few sales if your stuff is good because you inspired someone to write a song. I think it's just like really important to question yourself, like, Am I actually good? And even if you are good, I don't think it hurts to question yourself as long as it doesn't become destructive. Like as long as that you don't have so much self-doubt that you don't post it, things anymore. Awesome, dude. Well, thank you so much for coming on and doing this, bro. Absolutely, anytime, man. Now, as you mentioned earlier, the full call with Dilly can be found within our CCS course. Now, listen, guys, we're only a little bit in this video so far, and I hope that you've gotten a lot of great insight. So if our content has helped you, please make sure to share this with the other producers you know. We are trying to hit 20K on our YouTube channel before the year is over, and just sharing our videos can help so much. Now, back to the tight beats. Before we get into deep, there might be some people out there who have questions about the exporting and uploading process, so let's cover that. So how the hell do we get our beat even onto YouTube, and what the hell do we even title this thing? Now, before any exporting or uploading can happen, we want to be honest with you. If if one of the factors that you're scared about is your beat being stolen, it's gonna happen 100%. Remember, on one hand, you can make thousands a month from just uploading your beats to YouTube, but on the other hand, you can also have that beat easily stolen by rappers who probably are never gonna get more than 100 plays, so it's a pretty good trade-off, we would like to say. Now, for exporting your beat, all you're gonna wanna do is export an MP3 tagged file. Now, you may be wondering, well, how many times should I tag it or should I even tag my beats? And I'll be honest with you guys, there really is no science to this, but to give you a number, just do it three times. Even with 10 tags, artists will still steal the beat, but like I said, these are the guys getting like 100 views, so it's really not gonna matter. So how do we turn our beat into an actual video that we can upload to YouTube? Well, the first option is today's sponsor, videobolt.net. All right guys, so like I said, the first way is with today's sponsor, videobolt.net. Now with using videobolt.net, I want to stress that everything you do happens on this website itself. You don't need to get like any other softwares or any other editors. It's super simple. You get a template and you just change it to your liking. You can literally change every single freaking thing down to like shadow transparency. So let's log in and show you guys what I'm talking about. Okay, so before we get into any of the juicy features, first off, dark theme, come on. And I want you guys to know that Video Bolt is giving 10% off by using the first link in the description. So click that and go ahead and sign up. So when you guys first get into the account, you will see they have a ton of options up here, especially good if you're doing like Instagram sales for beat sales, definitely look at a product promo, holidays and sales. Also, if you wanna do streaming, they have streaming stuff. So there's a lot of options here other than just making tight beat videos, but that's today's focus. So we are gonna go into music visualization. Now, before we actually make one, I just wanna show you guys the sheer amount of templates that they have on this website. And they also have lyric videos, which is a brand new feature. So if you rap or if you sing and you wanna make lyric videos, once again, this will make your life 10 times easier than using any other video editing software and probably save you 10 hours of your life. And just being genuinely honest with you guys, just the amount of freaking templates they have for you to use, like, dude, I am literally scrolling as fast as I possibly can right now 
and it takes a few seconds to get to the bottom and even at that right there's still like see all so these even aren't all of them so the first one i found was a vu meter which i thought was extremely cool and even down here at the bottom they have like some other pre-made ones for you with different colors and whatnot but literally once we go into edit it you will see just simply how much you can change like you are not limited to just these seven choices you can literally change the freaking shadow transparency it's insane then they have this modern vinyl one that i thought was pretty cool and same concept right they have some other variations for you but once you get in you can fully edit these things to your liking you're not stuck with just these eight variations and then there was this last one that i thought was really cool like if you guys make like synth wave beats like this is just awesome so we're gonna go ahead and we are going to edit this modern vinyl one just so i can show you guys what this looks like so pretty simple all we're gonna do is just click the big old blue cyan edit button and now we're gonna go into their back end editor where all the magic happens essentially like i said there's no other softwares needed everything is done on their website so now there's a media tab a themes tab a customize and a help tab so with the logo here you guys will see the logo is this part right here and what's really cool is like if you're unsure about like which part you're editing they actually label it which is super genius and helpful so it's going to click into here and then you can add image you can choose a stock photo um, they get stuff from unsplash pixabay pexels which are websites that i use all the time with amazing stock photos or if you have something already like if you upload something once it stays in your media library so then you can just choose it now for a logo i don't think we're really going to put anything in for the logo so if you click on it you can hit this eyeball and it'll actually just not show it so for the author name let's just make this heat and save it and then as you guys can see as we change individual things it's making a low resolution preview for us and it's changing every time we make a change it's making these bottom changes here where we can click in and see what it's actually gonna look like. So the song name, let's just make this uh, like and subscribe because I need you to like and subscribe. So I also wanna point out that the resolution they give you, it's gonna be extremely low quality. Your video is gonna be high quality once you render it, but just to save you all the time in the world and not have you waiting like minutes and minutes to finally see this it's a low resolution so don't freak out but as you guys can see here right there's this label part here it sucks because it's low resolution it's small text but you can't see it but if you're a producer right this is a really good place to put like bpm 90 and then you can put like key a major right details like that if they're there you can get creative with it but you know look at that that looks super clean to me super easy stuff so now we're going to move on to the cover image so we're just going to click add image once again you can do stock photos odds are if you're doing this for type beats you're probably going to have an image of the rapper or artist you want to use so we have this photo of logic we're going to pull in here then it's going to upload it for us and then what we're going to do is while this loads i'm also going to change the background image to the same image of logic because i'm simply just unoriginal now to add our song in we click the song click this track and and then what's really cool is you can import your own songs if you have a song already uploaded you can choose it from your media library or you can actually import songs directly from soundcloud but for today we're just going to use the upload button here and then like i said over here on the left we have the themes this is like the original presets essentially that they make for you but maybe you want to customize it well like i said you can freaking customize every little thing that you possibly want to customize the big text opacity you can customize that the subscribe button and colors like everything is fully freaking customizable in here you want to change the fonts you can change the fonts so like this red right here let's say we want to make it purple it takes a few seconds to make a low resolution preview for us to watch and boom there we go and that's it guys everything happened on the back end of this website and while we're still using their templates you have so much freaking control to change every little detail that you can freaking imagine on this website so last and final step is then just click produce and download and then click on produce full length video and then boom this takes time to render it's going to give you an mp4 file then all you do is upload that baby to youtube and you are good to go huge thank you to videobolt.net for sponsoring this video and like we said earlier in the video if you use the link below you will get 10 percent off to join videobolt.net now another way you can upload your beats is by using tunes to tube and this is what it's going to look like it's just an image that you choose with black bars around it and the top right says upload in hd by tunes to tube this isn't the most professional way to do it but it is used by a lot of people within the community and so all you do is you go to tunes to tube.com you then sign in with your google account then once you sign in all you do is you upload both the audio file of the beat and the image that you want to use you fill out your title description and tags and then once you have everything filled out to 
to your liking, or you can also just make it unlisted and then properly fill everything out on the YouTube backend. You click create video, then it will automatically upload to your YouTube account. Then another method is by using Canva, where go to the search bar here, type in YouTube thumbnail, and then just click on one of these. Then click on create a blank thumbnail right there. So then the top left, all you do is you search music, and then you can go through and find one that you want to edit. Then of course you change the text, you change the image, and then all you do is click share, then click download, download it as a PNG or JPEG file. Then you take that image, drag it into a video editing software, then you get your beat as well. So then once you have your beat, just drag it over, drag over the image as well, and then drag over so that it matches the whole duration. And then of course, adjust these things properly to the proper size. And then all you do is render it out, upload it to YouTube, and you're good to go. And so that's the basics of first making the videos. So now the fun part begins or the really stressful part. So with YouTube, we have to play within their rules. And rule number one is your channel needs to have consistent content or for a better term, a niche. I always make the joke that if this channel was to ever upload a home improvement video, it would flop. And trust me, you'd be better off not watching that video as hanging up these curtains in my room literally kicked my ass. So to grow a channel, you need to pick one style. We think Dilly gave the perfect example of not every beat is the exact same artist, but his style and sound is always super consistent and people know what to expect from his beats. Now, does not doing the same artist keyword every time hurt your channel? Simply, we don't know. Just remember, you're playing in the YouTube sandbox and there will never be an easy, logical answer for you. Now, we will break down finding your style and keywords in a bit, but we first want to break down the usual method of growing a type B channel, and then later on in this video, we will break down the new suggested method to the best that we understand it here at Heat. Plus, we will also be going into the back-end analytics of a channel that has recently blew the hell up from the suggested methods so you guys can see the numbers for yourself. Getting back to the usual method that has been preached for years, it is to find a low competition keyword with a decent to high search volume. And the main goal here is to have your video rank in the search results. Now, before we get into the method, let's talk about the issues that you probably will face with this method. Issue number one is that you have to actually rank in the first place. This is why you need to go after low competition keywords, as if you go after high competition, your videos will probably never rank in search and you will get no views. And I wanna say this, that depending on which game you're trying to play, not ranking isn't always a bad thing if you're trying to go after the new suggested method that we'll break down later on. Number two is that if it's a low competition keyword, there might not be that many searches for it. Kind of like Economics 101, right? If there's no demand, the whole being a supplier of that one specific thing it's probably not gonna work out too well for you. Number three is that you're always going to be limited by the amount of searches for it. If an artist is trending or they just released a new album, the searches will usually rise a good bit. And in these cases, it's just all of a sudden there's this huge surge of demand and there's barely any competition. And so it moves so fast. The only issue is that as time goes on, and I mean literally days in most cases for tight beats around album releases, the demand just completely dries up. And once again, we are back to the issue of you're trying to supply what nobody is really demanding. Now, of course, this does not mean the search method is useless and won't work. These are just some of the issues that you may run into. And we also want to remind you, this is YouTube. There is no perfect logical approach and luck will 100% play a role in growing your channel. So now before we go through the process of finding keywords, I want to talk to Troy Vicious about his journey so far with growing his Type B channel to almost 10,000 subscribers. And you guys will actually see that his channel actually blew up to an artist blowing up and trending, and you guys will see what effects that had on his channel and on him. How long have you been uploading to your channel? My channel, I uploaded my first beat in the end of 2017. I think I probably uploaded maybe like three beats in 2017, and I didn't start taking it seriously until 2018. And then I had a, a few months of daily uploading and I got maybe like 500 subscribers, something like that. All right. And then I would kind of just go on and off. I didn't start um, taking it seriously until about May, 2020. And that's when I just went every day for over a year. That's where I saw all the growth. Like I, I started like from like 500 from previous attempts. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't completely from zero, but I was getting like 50 views a beat, you know, mm -hmm. for like at least like 
six months. During that daily period, was that all niched down? It started off like that. I was just kind of uploading a variety of beats within like a kind of like the underground SoundCloud niche. And it was a it was a pretty decent growth for a little bit. But back then I didn't like know to look at my analytics and to keep sticking with what was working. Okay, so then can you break down what that lesson is that you've learned with your analytics to look at? Like what specifically you're, you're looking for? Look at what is performing better than the others, what types of beats, and either stick with that or keep that in mind, you know? So I guess what you're saying, your overall strategy was you stuck to one style and you did different artists that fall into that style and you were just seeing like which artists have the most tractions? That was my strategy at the beginning. Okay. I would try different things. I didn't really like pick one and go. I was just making what I was making, you know? Mm -hmm. Then I started to realize certain beats do better than others. So now when I post something and it does good, I posted a Sofago type beat like in December, 2020. And mm -hmm. it had maybe like 40,000 monthly listeners on Spotify. This okay. is like right before we popped off. Yeah. And I saw that one did significantly better than everything else. That whole next year was like all Sofago type beats. And that's that where the whole next came year. From. Pretty much. Okay, so you're at, I think like 8.6K, so almost 10K. So I guess, when did the Sofago beats start in terms of subscriber range? Like how long have you been going with that? Yeah, like I said, the first one was in like December, 2020. Mm -hmm. And that's, you can probably see the graph, it went like, you know? <laughs> It's like the next six months after that, like it was always Sofago and then two other artists. So I was copying and pasting my title and thumbnails or a title and descriptions that whole time, you know? How much of a role do you think luck plays within the YouTube game? Big role, a big role for sure. Cause um, with the Sofago thing, I was at the right place at the right time. My channel had just enough to rank for that keyword at the time. The competition was low. The um, amount of people looking for that was on the cusp of blowing up, you know? I was definitely the right place, right time with that. But where luck doesn't come in is like that effort that came before that, because before I posted the Sofago type beat, I'd already been posting for every day for six months. I'd been posting beats that get like 50 views and just grinding through it, learning my lessons, you know? When the luck came and an opportunity came, I had a more refined skill set to back it up, you know? How did you feel when that happened? What was going through your mind? Like, did you think that you're about to like take over the world or kind of like, like how did that feel to you? <laughs> like the growth was ridiculous for the amount of subscribers I had. I was pulling in like hundreds of thousands of views like a month. When it was good, it was really good, you know? Cause before that, um, I was posting every day for like six months making no sales, uh, no ad revenue. Quit my job when I started daily posting because of COVID. I was on uh, my savings and unemployment, living with my parents. Then when that happened, the views started coming in, the money I'd never made before come in, you know, it was ridiculous. Did you ever think about quitting in those six months? Like, especially after having a track record of trying this out many of times. No, um, I struggle with, uh, self-doubt and feelings like that way more today than I did in those initial six months. It was only when um, the burnout started to affect me. Like, yeah, posting every day, the same thing. I, the growth was great. And I, I started neglecting mental and physical well-being mm -hmm. to keep up that growth because I kept seeing the numbers grow up. I didn't want to take a day off. I didn't want to switch things up because I didn't want to, I didn't want to mess with that growth at all. You know, I burned out a few times, you know? If you, for whatever reason, had to start over a new channel, What's your game plan? Is it is it still that like determination of just like, I'm gonna do this daily and we're just gonna get the ball rolling that way? Like no magical tactics? Yeah, pretty much. Whether it's with uh, type beats or tutorials or any other kind of content, you really just gotta grind it out, you know? I think for any YouTube channel in general, it's like a period in the beginning where you're just uploading to, it seems like nothing, you know? Yeah. So if you're focused on the short term, results, you're going to be disappointed and quit, you know? So it's like, um, whether you're grinding out type beats or tutorials, like you just got to have the mindset where it's like, it's not going to pop off until potentially years down the line, you know? Yeah. The only way you, um, you can't make it and you're constantly proving yourself is if you quit before you make it, you know? Would you mind sharing like average monthly sales that you would say come from YouTube? At the peak of it, I was making maybe like a 3k off sales alone a month wow 
um, nowadays that the uh, initial growth spurt has kind of gone down. Mm -hmm. I'm about maybe like one to two ish, uh, more or less, you know, mm -hmm. I got like some placements and other income coming in. where like, I'm not so worried about uh, that constant growth on YouTube to keep my money up. So to close everything out, I'm a lot of questions here. Is there anything that you want to share that you think is like super important or like you want to double down on for somebody to hear who wants to grow a type B channel? Definitely, like we were talking about earlier, like you gotta outlast everybody and you just can't quit, you know? That picture where the line got right before it blows up and you quit right here, it's so true, you know? If you're just constantly doing better every day, you know, something's gonna happen sooner or later, so just stick with it. Sweet, so if any of you guys have any questions, feel free to hit him up as well. He has different knowledge he can pick apart for you guys. And uh, yeah, man, appreciate you coming on for this this quick little yeah. interview. Thank you for having me. So now we get back to the video. So shout out to Troy Vicious for sharing a little bit of his journey. And he said that if you guys had any questions, feel free to hit him up on Instagram. So take advantage of that. Now let's get into finding a keyword. And what you guys need to hear is that there is no way to find a guaranteed or bulletproof keyword, but there are some best practices here when doing these search methods. Now, if we want to rank, especially as a smaller channel, remember, we need to go after low competition keywords. And in order to even know what a low competition keyword is, we need a plugin like TubeBuddy or vidIQ. Also, as a side note, sometimes TubeBuddy will say a keyword is great and then vidIQ will say it's terrible or it will happen vice versa. We would not recommend spending so much time trying to analyze this and figuring out which one is right because it's simply 100% impossible to know what the results will be with targeting a keyword before you even upload a video in the first place or upload multiple videos at that. Step number one is to think about which style of beat could you make for the next year to years of your life? I'm gonna tell you guys right now, you will win on YouTube by simply uploading. So if you can't do this long-term, you essentially will never win. Step number two is to think about the artist or specific sounds that match that style. We have to get started somewhere and this is it. And additionally, you could get more creative with using keywords like smooth, soul, R&B type beat, where it's still specific to the sound, but not an artist, remember. The main factor here is low competition keywords, so as you get more specific, you will less likely get more competitive. And step number three is you need to start searching for these keywords you think of and seeing what the data is that is presented. And I actually wanted to show you guys the legit actual process of keyword research. And remember, this isn't even going to factor in the months of uploading and maybe switching out different artists, but still sticking to the same style. All right guys, so I wanted to film this part because this is really the rawest part about uploading beats to YouTube is trying to find your keywords. Now, I wanna stress this again, is that even though with using these tools, there is no way that's 100% ever gonna be guaranteed or bulletproof that these keywords are gonna lead you to success. So like I said before, step one is we need to think of what can we do for a long period of time because YouTube is a freaking hustle and a grind. I mean, on the Heat channel here, we have been uploading videos for over almost two years now. So anyway, step two of finding keywords is you, you just have to start somewhere. So we're gonna start with uh, like my own beats that I used to really make a lot. I used to do a lot of boom bap beats and I used to do a lot of like logic boom bap type beats just cause I listened to a lot of logic. So we're just gonna type that in. Okay guys, so we just searched for logic type beat and I have both vidIQ and TubeBuddy installed. Looks like as of right now, they're pretty much giving me the same score for the keyword. So it's not really a big drastic difference between the two. Now this is usually where we're faced with the hardest part of doing keyword research is there's no real clear way to be like, oh, this is an awesome keyword, right? I can see that the top guy ranking 11 months ago, 6,000 views, there's a guy behind him with 18,000 views, 20,000, this lethal needle guy is huge, he has 1.1 million, there's another guy, 128,000, this guy has 800, like there's really no clear way to be like, oh, this is a great or this is a bad keyword I shouldn't target because we're seeing a lot of people rank that really don't get that many views and some people who rank who get a lot of views, so is it that competitive? It doesn't look like it, right, the scores are telling us it's not that competitive, but also, right, how much is really searched for logic boom bap type beat? So now here's another factor you have to think about is like, let's say we do logic type beat. 
really logic doesn't do a lot of beats that are super different or like super trap oriented with trap drums he has a few songs but a lot of them are usually more like the boom bap style anyways so you know this is kind of it's it's different for every artist really you have to think about the context of like does this artist release a lot of regular music and then they do like a boom bap style every once in a while or like are they pretty much coherent together probably a really long explanation but i'm going to keep this in the video because this is part of keyword research of like it's it's gonna be different for every time you do a search with every artist and every style and that's the nature of doing keyword research and why it's so hard and why you're never really gonna know before you start uploading if this is worth your time now after clicking on logic type beat and searching it TubeBuddy actually has enough data that it's going to tell us these searches per month which is about 7.6 thousand but we can see that the competition is pretty high here right if it's in the red that means it's bad and it's a score of 20. now we're going to scroll down and vidIQ says 60. so this is a clear case of essentially you can't really pick a winner and say which one's better than the other i don't know why this happens but it just does with the data that they somehow collect but don't stress out about this. So now here's a good example of just kind of using some context from YouTube itself. So when I typed in logic type beat, this Luby guy is ranking a lot. Lubai, I hope I said that right. And yeah, this guy's ranking a lot. So this guy seems to be like a top dog for logic type beats. Now I'm gonna click into his channel and I wanna see, right, how many subs does this guy have? How, like, is he really targeting this keyword a lot? So he has 8.26K, which is a good amount, but I would say competition wise, it's not like the end of the game. Like if this is the top guy for logic type beat, it's really not that insane of competition in my own opinion. Oh, with being on YouTube, he doesn't do like every post isn't a logic type beat either. So he's really not fully, fully like the guy for logic type beats. You know, in my opinion, this keyword is good enough to start posting for and seeing if anything can happen. This Beats by Bow guy is also posting a lot of Logic type beats. This guy has 1,000 subscribers. Really what I'm seeing here is there's a guy with 1,000 subscribers getting a good amount of views for his subscriber ratio. You know, so kind of based on seeing what other people are getting with these views themselves, I would say that Logic type beat is a good keyword to start targeting. Is it gonna get you to blow up? I, I don't know, right? That's the thing with YouTube that you really have to take into consideration. Is selling beats online a good keyword, right? I, I couldn't tell you. If you give me five more years, I can give you more data, but you know, you, you're never gonna know until you start posting and getting that data. But really, right, we're just trying to find a keyword that doesn't have that much competition in it. So with my two years of being on YouTube and growing this channel up as far as we've got it so far, that is the most honest I can be about keyword research and how the process goes, right? You find something, but ultimately to really see if it's gonna work, you have to do it for a long period of time and let YouTube give you data. And you might go literally 60 days, 90 days, 120 days or more before you ever see a spurt in your growth. You might quit on day 60, but on day 90, your channel would have started getting views if you would have kept on going. That's, that's YouTube in a nutshell. So, Welcome to YouTube, guys, where it's truly a game of trying to be more correct than being more wrong. And as you guys saw earlier from Troy Vicious, over his journey, he tested out new keywords of artists, but still kept the same overall style. And also, don't worry, later on, we will be going through the analytics of a few other Type B channels to break down how to read the data once you actually have it. But before that, let's get into our call with Matthew May and ask him some questions about getting to 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. When you first got started, Started. what were your expectations like were you like man I want a hundred subscribers in the next month or like what was your starting mentality when I started I mean it was almost four years ago September 2018 of course it would be almost two years later that I would actually take it seriously but I didn't I had really low expectations which actually helped I've always set like short-term goals you know a hundred subs and a thousand subs I never I didn't start the channel it was like oh I want to have a hundred thousand subscribers I started off with R&B stuff and then eventually I did rap and it didn't really work so I went to pop but I didn't I was just kind of hoping for the best and it, it took a while of stringing different descriptions and titles and thumbnails together until I found something that worked but my expectations were, were, were pretty low because it's competitive you know one of the things that always hurts producers on YouTube is you're posting audio to a video platform mm -hmm. YouTube doesn't know that they're going to approach your video like a video so you're automatically already kind of losing with, you know, watch time and the retention and the click-through rates. And it's, it's hard, but yeah, to sum it up, I had 
pretty low expectations. You mentioned stringing together like different descriptions, different titles, different keywords. Is there any method to the madness that you've ever seen or is it always just been kind of, I guess like a compulsive act of like, you know what, let's do this today and see what happens. I mean, yeah, there was somewhat of a I mean, not a strategy, but I would try to use vidIQ with, with different um, tags, try to put the year at the end of the tags, just try different thumbnail styles. Cause you know, again, cause we're posting to a video platform. I don't want to just post like a crusty JPEG. You know, I, I, I wanted to make a nice thumbnail. And I would often watch videos on YouTube about how to grow a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And it was always disappointing because it never applied to selling beats. But if there's one thing I took away from a lot of those videos. It was like thumbnails and, 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 and titles. So I just kept going, kept stringing different things together. And now it's like, I'll come across people's uh, beats on YouTube. Like I had a guy reach out to me and he has the exact same description as me, has the exact same title, exact same thumbnail, which, I, which isn't a problem. I mean, I copy people. Yeah. Like, like, it's working. Yeah. And I was, and it, it worked for him. And I was like, that's great. You know? So like I did a ton of different descriptions because, you know, I was doing the free for profit beats. Mm -hmm. And I, they started to work, but I was like, okay, how can I somehow profitize this? So I was like tweaking my terms and I kind of finally came up with my terms I have now. And I don't think I was the first to do it, but I, I think that after seeing the success of my channel, I think a lot of people have tried it and it seems yeah. to work. So I would encourage people to give it a shot. So the question was like, how long into your journey did you say, like you started popping off? And I, I deliberately said, I want analytics. It was really slow. I mean, I have to say, I had a very steep spike and it happened because a lot of things came together at once. First, it's the beginning of the pandemic, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, as I watch more interviews with you, it seems that a lot of people had something happen at the beginning of the pandemic. Like if my beat business was established during the pandemic, I would have made like a ton of money. Yeah. But it wasn't. <laughs> it really started, it started from people were home, whatever. At the beginning of the pandemic, I, found what I wanted to do. I, I started off with R&B beats and I stuck to that and I was consistent with that. I found the title and the description I want and I started being consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, I started posting a beat every single day. Then I think eventually I went to every other day, which is what I do now consistently for the past two and a half years. And I put that all together and you know, it, it went all up. I mean, I remember the first free for profit type beat I made. It was just like some stupid ukulele thing. And I was like, I don't even know if this will work. And <laughs> You know how on your YouTube videos you can see if it's one out of ten, and it was by far number one. So I was like, "Oh, well, this works." Um, so that was so, was it a one out of ten right away when you uploaded it? Oh yeah, like, right out of where. Interesting. Right out, right and do you remember yeah. how big your audience was at the time you did that? Oh, I mean, just over a thousand subscribers. Okay, so it wasn't that many people yet, but it no. was like a clear indicator of like, oh, like what? Clearly, this this is something. Uh -huh. right? This. This, this makes a difference. How much of a role do you think kind of the whole luck meets opportunity thing plays in YouTube? You'll never know what beat blows up. You'll just post and it kind of gets sucked into the algorithm. It's like, it, it, there's the strategy to posting beats, but then there's also the algorithm. And the reason beats blow up is because the most important part of your video is the first 24 hours. And you know, for example, my most popular beat I consistently make is called chill acoustic pop type beat. I have, at this point, I gotta have over a hundred videos with that same title. Mm -hmm. so my most viewed video, 2 million views almost, that title. But in, in some videos, my chill acoustic pop guitar ones get a couple hundred thousand. Some of them don't do that well. Mm -hmm. Like my most recent one was one out of 10. Everything was a watch time, retention, click the rate. And I'm like, why? Everything else has the same title. It's mm -hmm. because that initial group of people that watched that video push notifications the people who got recommended watched it longer which was a sign to youtube to push it to more people which means that was in the feed right yeah people liked the way it sounded and stuck around for longer but maybe also the thumbnail was catchy i have also like realized this took me a couple of years to realize because i thought it was a coincidence at first the name of the beat actually makes a difference um, what do you a mean? lot of people, well, like, like, you know, I call my beats, you know, like chill acoustic pop type beat, be there, you know, I don't uh -huh. know some cool title, whatever. And people use those titles to write lyrics always in the description. I remember when I would have certain names that were just like short and catchy, it, it, it made, 
a difference. There's just something about these like very common, I don't even know what it is, these common words that are short that I started to pick up on it. Like this one called Butterflies that I made that did a little bit better. Like they would do a little bit better when the title was good. And kind of like all time top selling beats. I don't know if this made a difference. Mm -hmm. um, someday, done, no connection, cherry, my best gift as a Christmas song. Charm, pressure, blurred, caution. I don't know. There's just, there's definitely a trend here because it had happened enough times to where it's a pattern. It, it caught my eye, yeah. right? Some, clearly something's, something's there. So again, that's just a coincidence. I mean, I just pulled the name out of my ass and it, I just <laughs> happened to do better. So keep in mind that whether it's rappers or singers, people, you know, they're, they're pacing lyrics in the comments, they're writing something. Where are they going to take inspiration from? They're going to look at the title. So if the title is kind of catchy and it's got a good name, that can help people click on the video. All right, guys. So you guys know that we love our data over here at Heat, and we're actually doing a case study for Matt right now. So we've had Google Analytics set up for quite some time on Matt's Beat Store in the past few months here. And I want you guys to look, right? So this is filtered by e-commerce purchases total. So uh, you guys can see, right? These are going top to bottom. So over you, done, someday, sugar, forget. Literally, except the first one, they're all one word. It is just something about these short titles, I guess, that seem to work better. Uh, so that is interesting to see. Awesome. Well, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> for giving like 40 minutes of your time. Back to the video, guys. And like I said earlier, the full call with Matt can be found within the CCS course for our students. Now, before we get into the new suggested method, which I know that many of you are essentially filming out of the mouth for, there's still one thing that we want to go over with reading your data and your analytics. We always get the question, what is a good click-through rate? What's a good average view duration? And what you should do is not compare your data to others, but you need to compare your own data with your own. So we're gonna go ahead and get back to the computer to run you guys through understanding data and analytics. All right guys, so I just wanna say this might be the most in-depth video we have ever made on this channel so far. And we apologize if it's a little bit scattered and all over the place, but this is just how it has to be. So when it comes to click-through rate, it's just a waste of your time to compare your numbers to other people. At the end of the day, all you simply want to do is get a higher and higher and higher click-through rate. So some producers were nice enough to give us the backend access to look at their analytics just so I can show you guys that this is gonna range and there is no perfect number. So first up, we have Watch Woods and in the past 90 days, his average click-through rate is 7.7%. Next up, we have Krista and in the past 90 days, his CTR was 10.2%. We have Daniel Saint, who in the past 90 days, his CTR was 11.7%. Then we have Rucker Vorhawks, who in the past 90 days, his CTR has been 8.5%. Also, you guys see this big spike right here? That's because of the suggested method. We'll talk about that later. The main point of this is it's gonna be pointless to compare your CTR to other people's CTR. At the end of the day, we just want it to be higher. So the better question then is how do we get our CTR to be higher and know really what to do in the situation? Well, we're gonna to go to Watch Woods and I'm gonna show you guys a pattern that I found within his most recent videos along with his whole channel. So we're gonna to go to advanced mode once again, change this to the past 90 days. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna sort by impressions first, and then we're gonna look at the click-through rate. So his average is 7.7%. So essentially any videos that are above the average are videos that do well. And any videos that are below the average are videos that we want to fix, or there at least should be something done there, right? Because it's super below the average, especially with these few videos he recently uploaded: 1.6, 1.9, 3.8, 5.8. These videos, especially these two videos are extremely below. So we have to figure out like what's kind of happening there. So I want to show you guys the videos that have the highest CTR and tell me if you guys can see a pattern here so right pretty pretty simple he has a you know unique design he also has big text but also guys take a look at this right even with the same design he usually has a video without text has a lower CTR. Now with these most recent videos, right, they do have a lower CTR than usual, very lower, but they also are, you know, in account getting more impressions than usual. This one's at 10,000, 9,000 compared to his usual, you know, 1500 to 3000 range. So that is a big jump. And of course, as your videos get more impressions, your click-through rate will inherently go down, but this is a huge drop that I think is less than normal of what should be expected. So let's take a look, right? Remember, this is his usual style of thumbnails. Now, the ones that have low, low CTRs, completely different than what he usually does. 
and this one actually is kind of his old style but remember without any text the ones without text always seem to perform less and once again this last one here 3.8 percent once again drastically different from his usual style and they seem to be underperforming so because he tried different styles we're actually able to get the data so if all he ever did was post the same style of thumbnail every time there's never any comparative data that we can have but what we can see is that the keywords he's doing right now with the titles he's doing right now it seems to be working out very well for him it's just his thumbnails aren't performing because he changed them now the first way and the most convenient way to test your thumbnails and or titles if you want to test that stuff out too is with the tubebuddy legend monthly subscription that is 50 dollars a month now if you don't want to use tubebuddy you just have to do it manually so remember with a b testing you want to test out only one variable at a time so you want to keep all your titles and descriptions the same you just want to change the thumbnail and there is no really perfect time for how long you want to test i would say the next 30 days or the next equivalent to 30 uploads obviously in this watch woods case his videos did a lot better they got a lot of impressions so we got a lot of data back really fast with this but you want to alternate right so what he would do is alternate between his usual style like this and then this new style he wants to try out and it's not really about the artistic vision you have we're playing the YouTube game. It's simply about what does the data say that works better. Now, to give you guys another example, we're going to hop into Krista's back end where his average CTR is 10.2%. Right off the bat, we can see a video that has 5.7, which is usually, you know, that's pretty much under his average by a good bit. And why is that? Well, if we actually look at the usual thumbnails, there's kind of like some RGB, some kind of glitch stuff happening. You guys can tell, you guys can see there's a theme going on here, right? But if we look at the one that has 5.7, it's because he actually just started testing out. It looks like a regular, maybe an anime is what he's going to go for now all across the board, or it's an image with the black bars on the side. And like I said, this has only been one video with not that many impressions, but the CTR as of now is down. Of course, in my opinion, this isn't enough data to make the best decision, but right off the bat, we can see that this thumbnail isn't performing the best. So what I'd recommend for Krista is to alternate and see if the trend continues of the black bar videos not doing that well. And also I wanna note that Krista isn't doing a true A-B test either, as the videos aren't all targeting the same title and keyword. So just that variation could also make the CTR lower or high. So wow, are, are you guys enjoying this video yet? We really wanted to go above and beyond and just out of the way to make sure we could value pack this video for you guys. All right, so now it is time to talk about the suggested method. So as it's called, the suggested method focuses on getting views, not from the search algorithm, but from the suggested algorithm, which if you didn't know, this is where 75% of the views on YouTube come from. So just from that stat alone, it should be easy to understand how videos go viral and get a lot of views if they're sucked into the suggested algorithm. And these are the analytics from a producer who's blown up with this method. And you guys can see the videos really do get sucked in. But before we dive deep into those analytics, we first need to talk about the suggested method to the best that we understand it. So first, we want you to understand that it is the opposite of the search method. With suggested, we want to target the most popular and competitive keywords out there. And the goal with suggested is not to rank in the search, but to show up on the suggested sidebar of the top, top videos. Because if that main video is getting 5,000 views a day, and then your video is on these suggested videos beside it with an 8% CTR, you're now getting 400 views a day. Now, while this sounds amazing, we need you guys to understand that nothing is ever guaranteed with these methods. Now, before your videos get recommended to others, you need to focus on getting suggested alongside your own videos. So even with this method, it's still important that we need to niche down as well because returning viewers on YouTube is a huge driver of success. Now, to get suggested onto your own videos, instead of rambling on camera, I wanted to give you guys an actual example on the computer with channels that I believe nail the best practices on their heads. All right, guys, so now for one of the factors that I think really helps you get more suggested views and suggested alongside your own videos, it actually plays a large role in your thumbnails. And for that example, we're gonna look at Yondo here today. So when you first go to his page, you can see this guy pretty much owns this color and it's super consistent and he's established himself as a brand with this type of thumbnail now the reason as to why this is so important is because somebody can discover his channel 
watch one of the videos and be like, yo, like this was a really sick beat. This is so important because if somebody's watching this video and they're like, yo, like this was a dope beat, right? They understand this guy's theme. They can easily look on the side now and be like, that's a Yondo beat. That's a Yondo beat. That's a Yondo beat. That's a Yondo beat. Like, like you guys see how easy it is to pick out which beats are Yondo type beats simply because of his consistent thumbnail style and color. That is what's going to get people to click on your videos when they get suggested to them. And then also, if you go back to the homepage, which I don't think it'll let us do because we're logged out. But if you go back to the homepage, right, obviously it's not going to be there. But, you know, if you guys saw his thumbnails on the homepage, it would once again be super easy to pick out. Oh, that's another Yondo type beat. And like I said, if you have a good positive experience and you're able to associate this thumbnail style with a good beat, you're not gonna have to think to click and your brain is just gonna subconsciously automatically want to click. Another example of this is Epic the Dawn, who once again, you know, his thumbnails have some different colors in them, but he all has this same different kind of muted gold tone. So once again, right, same concept. We can easily pick out which beats are his on the sidebar here. So if you enjoy this beat and you're like, yo, this guy's quality was awesome, Right, you easily can tell like, oh, this is the same guy. I wanna keep on listening to the same guy because his beats are so good. And so I believe this is part one of getting your own video suggested. And as you guys can see, right, even I went through and updated a whole bunch of our videos with the same style of thumbnail. So that way, if somebody's watching our videos, they can easily look on the sidebar and be like, oh, that's another heat video because it's the same style of thumbnail I once saw. Or if they go onto their YouTube homepage and right, they see one of our videos, they can easily be like, okay, that's another heat video. I just watched them and I learned something really good. You're subconsciously just gonna wanna click. So I'm not saying that these tunes to tube images don't work because for guys like Pale 1080 and even the second channel, 1080 Pale, right? That's all he does. So yes, they still work. But I do think that for playing this long-term game, and especially for starting out where you don't have a lot of numbers, you really wanna try to find some consistency in your thumbnails because if we even look back at Pale's old thumbnails, once again, right, he had this same similar style where yeah, the color of the background changed, but this image in the middle was always the same template style. And so it's very really easy to tell, like if this gets recommended to you on the sidebar or on the homepage, you can easily tell this is another guy's beat that I just listened to before. And so your brain just subconsciously wants to click it. Once again, we don't know logically how this works. At the end of the day, this is the YouTube algorithm. And like we said, there is luck involved in all of this. But I think having this unique identity that's consistent with building a brand plays a huge role that many people, many, many people underestimate. And like we said earlier, we also have a full breakdown of the back end of one producer who has used the suggested method to gain over 150,000 views in the past 90 days. Plus, there's another breakdown from a producer producer who snuck his way into the suggested algorithm recently. So if you guys are ready to see that, let's do it for you. Okay, so we're first gonna start off with a channel that is seeing the suggested method work for them on a smaller scale, but still a pretty big scale for their channel. So shout out Rucker Vorhawks for taking my advice and doing this, and I'll show you guys how we got his channel into the suggested method from what I believe that we did that worked ultimately. So to give you guys some context, yesterday he got almost 400 views when he's averaging just about around 100. There was a day where he had 200 there, but he's averaging around 100 views a day. So before we check out the upload he posted yesterday that got a lot of views, I wanna check out his first upload that got thrown into the suggested. All right guys, so this is his first video that blew up and his most viewed video that has almost 34,000 views on his channel. And also I just wanna show you like the retention on this video isn't really all that insane either. So for a lot of you guys worrying about retention, retention doesn't seem to be that big of a factor that I think a lot of people are making it out to be. Now, if you guys can see here, right, almost 50% of the views for this video have came from the suggested algorithm. So I want to go ahead and break this down even more to see just which videos are suggesting this one. So in our analytics, we're going to go to traffic source here, and then we're going to click on suggested videos. And as you guys can see here, right, this is last 28 days. Let's change this to last 90, right? You guys can see just the impressions, just the amount of impressions is literally four times the next up. I mean, look at search, dude. Search was only 1,800 impressions while this one was 21,000. <laughs> So if we click into the suggested videos tab here, it's actually gonna show us what videos are recommending our video. So the number one video and the number one channel seems to be this guy named Boo Ha Beats. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong, but he has one really popular video called Zaza. His channel has almost 
600,000 subscribers and this video has almost 13 million views. And so right now you guys are starting to see how suggested really works, right? You want to go after the biggest keywords, the biggest competitive spaces, because it's not about ranking in search, but it's all about having your video suggested alongside the top top videos. So here's the beat that he posted yesterday. And I'm also going to show you guys the retention as well. So like I said, no crazy retention. Now this doesn't mean that if your retention goes down, YouTube might stop suggesting the video because the retention is poor. But as we can see just from right away, retention doesn't seem to be that big in first getting the video to get recommended, but to stay recommended, it might matter. Obviously you should always shoot for good retention. It's a basic YouTube metric that you do want to have as high as can be, but let's go into advanced mode and let's see, right? We'll go to traffic source again. We can see browse features, which is like the homepage is where he's seeing a lot of it, but also suggested videos make up a good amount of impressions too. And as we can see, his number one guy is ultra beats. And then we have Buha Beats again. So let's see how, how big is this ultra guy. So the number one video that's recommended his newest upload, this guy has 600,000 subscribers and posted five days ago and almost has 100,000 views on his new beat. So like we said before, you're not gonna beat out these guys in these search rankings, but if you can essentially have your video rank in the suggested over here, like I said, this guy, this guy gets what? How many views? 522 views per hour. Like if you can have 10% come over and click on your video on the sidebar here, if it gets here, that's a lot of views. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to get into the spiciest of suggested content. Shout out Jared for letting us get in the back end of his analytics and show this in a video because this is some insane shit to show you guys. And like we mentioned with the suggested method before, once again, none of this is ever guaranteed. Remember that, but just as fast as you can get picked up and get these 17,000 views a day, well, just a few days later, YouTube can also spit you back out. So if we take a look into this, his top uploads in the past 30 days, right? You guys can see the consistency of pretty much going after almost the same keywords in every beat, but pretty much the same style every single time. If you look at his top nine videos, six are literally the, the exact title just with a name change for the beat. Now, I know you guys are probably curious, so I'm gonna show you it anyways. Like I said, don't compare your data right? The whole point of click through rate is you want it to be as high as possible. 12.4 isn't the magical number, but yeah, if you have higher click through rate, you're going to get more views. So it doesn't matter what your CTR is. If your average is 7%, just try to make it higher, right? That's the whole point. Don't think that 12.4 is now the ultra extreme vanity metric that you need to have. And his average view duration was about 119. Then if we scroll down, you guys can see suggested accounted for almost 70% of the total views for his channel, which is insane. So now we're gonna hop into his five most popular videos and check out the audience retention. So for this video, it was 49.5%, which is pretty good, but this is a pretty big curve for audience retention. Usually you want it to be, you know, a little bit of drop off, then a straight line the whole way through, not this hockey stick. Then once again, if we look at this beat, 47% retention, essentially the same graph and almost the same amount of average view duration again. Looking at his third most popular beat, once more, 54% retention, but still the same kind of hockey graph he usually has. Fourth most popular beat, 51% retention, another hockey graph with a retention though. And then for his last most popular type beat on the channel, 36% retention graph. And you guys can see even more of the usual hockey stick here. So in my opinion, there is no magical number you want to shoot for retention. Obviously always just try to have higher retention. Then to show you guys some more info here on the back end, United States accounts for 53% of his total traffic. And then the next is Mexico, Brazil, and France, which is really interesting. Now let's hop into the advanced mode and take a look at where all of his videos are getting suggested from. So let's go to past 90 days here. Then we'll go into the traffic source. Of course, suggested, like we said, freaking 98,000 views. Okay, so now I wanna break down where all his views are coming from with the suggested video. So we're last 90 days, traffic source of suggested. His number one suggested video is actually his own video. So he's getting suggested alongside himself. Then it's a Don Tolliver and Baby Keem type beat, which is really interesting because his genre is like Smino and Lucky Day type beat, which I don't think really matched Don Tolliver at all. 
video has 150,000 views almost, so it's getting a lot of views. So obviously if you're getting suggested, you know, 120 views per hour according to vidIQ. So if you're getting suggested and you're getting clicks, it's potential to get a lot of views. Next up is another one of his beats he's getting suggested across. Then the fourth one down is a free for profit Isaiah Rashad type beat, which uh, Smino in it, Smino this keyword. This guy has almost 300,000 views. So once again, a huge video. This video is getting 200, no, 110 views per hour. So like I said, if you're getting suggested alongside of these videos, especially with these high as hell 17 to 20% click through rates, you're definitely gonna rack up some views. So yeah, guys, that is the back end for the suggested method. As you guys can see, it's pretty insane of what the suggested algorithm can do. But remember, none of this is guaranteed and just as fast as they pick you up, they can also just pull you out of it as well. So as you guys can see, right, these videos, just something about them, man, they get sucked up into that algorithm and there's a lot of views to gain. Now, when it comes to keywords here, literally the best practice is to look at the most popular video for the style you want to go after and just copy and paste the tags, title, and description. And like we said, this is the best that we understand the suggested algorithm and nothing is guaranteed. And I'll be honest with you guys, I don't even think tags do anything that much for videos nowadays. So don't think that just copying the tags is all of a sudden gonna shoot up your views. But wow, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is what we got for growing and starting a type B channel in 2022. And if you're a producer wanting to grow on YouTube, don't forget about growing on Instagram, where we have another amazing long video about everything you need to know about growing your IG right here. Peace out guys, and I am ready for bed.